Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. So today's topic is thyroid radiation and a popular topic, something I've been actually studying a little bit more lately. It's a topic <clears throat> on which there are a lot of different opinions as to when you do it and why you do it. So to understand that, you need to understand Hashimoto's. For those of you who have not seen any of these videos, uh, Hashimoto's is an immune attack on your thyroid. It's the number one cause of hypothyroidism. And uh, people get uh, hypothyroid symptoms, overweight, fatigue, can't sleep, uh, uh, bowels, uh, backing up, constipation, dry skin, um, on the, dry skin usually on the shins, you can have puffing in the face, uh, dry mouth, you can have a dry mouth, you can have dry eyes, there's a ton of things that, that you get with the hypothyroid aspect of it. And then eventually you start to develop hyperthyroidism from the immune system attacking it. As the immune system attacking it, you destroy tissue, this is the Cliff Notes version, you destroy, tish, destroy tissue, it vomits out a bunch of, of thyroid hormone and you can get anxiety and you can get uh, heart palpitations for no reason at all and tremors and, and um, uh, night sweats. So you, a bunch of more hyper symptoms. So that's kind of you know Hashimoto's. And so the point is it's, it's actually a thyroid problem first and then it's a autoimmune problem. Actually, I would say it's actually an autoimmune problem first and a thyroid problem second. So basically what happens with that patient is they go to the endocrinologist. Endocrinologist today says you got Hashimoto's, but it really doesn't change initial treatment. Most endocrinologists are gonna look at your th normal thyroid panel, thyroid stimulating hormone, T3, T4, and, and not run a full panel. And then they're going to give you thyroid hormone. And maybe it gives you a little bit of a, a, a brief you know, break and you feel a little better for a little time. But as long as this is going on, as long as you're getting attacked, it's not gonna work for a lot of people. And so in those folks for whom it doesn't work, there is a, there, there's a second and a third option. And, this, and the second and or third option, depending on who you're talking to, is radiation and or surgery. So we're talking about radiation today. So radiating the thyroid, um, for me would be a third option, just for the record, <laughs> okay. But radiating the thyroid, you basically take a pill there's, uh, there's radioactive iodine in it, uh, something that I really can't imagine I would want in my body, but, but, uh, but that's how they do it. And then they dose, hopefully they dose up enough to where your thyroid dies, okay? Or radioactive iodine kills your, uh, your, your thyroid, radiation kills your thyroid. So, so now we have no thyroid. And the question usually is, all right, I don't have a thyroid. Now they're, now they're telling me I'm going to go into hypothyroid, period. And then they're going to control it with the medication. Now I have seen a couple, uh, probably a few hundred of these cases, okay? And it, it, over a period of time I've been doing this. So obviously that's not always true. I don't know what the percentage is of people for whom that doesn't work, but it's enough to where I've seen several hundred of these myself. So. So what happens, a couple of things happen. First of all, it's a thyroid problem um, that, that is being attacked by an immune system and you have an immune problem. So now the thyroid's gone. So that problem in theory is gone. And I say in theory because sometimes they don't give you enough iodine and sometimes the thyroid doesn't completely die and you may not find that out for months or years later while, and you're still having the symptoms. So that's one reason that you're still having the symptoms. Another reason is because the immune response is still there. Now, let's say you have an immune response and they, and they measure these immune responses by measuring something called your thyroid peroxidase enzymes, TPO antibodies. If you've been watching this, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been watching this, then check out one of our videos on Hashimoto's. And so, uh, so this, these antibodies, okay, that maybe let's say they're at 500 and they take your thyroid out. The antibodies don't just go away. These antibodies were created to attack thyroid tissue. And 
and so there's a number of, of, of things going on there. First of all, the, the antibodies might go from 500 to 200, or they might go from 500 to 50, but there are still antibodies there taking, uh, uh, taking uh, instructions from your immune system to attack thyroid tissue. Now, if the thyroid tissue hasn't completely been, um, hasn't been completely destroyed by the iodine because they didn't use enough, you're still gonna get an attack here. Uh, over the years, I have been told and uh, have read that on occasion, they don't get the thyroid tissue out. Um, I've read that that happens on more than just occasion uh, from some sources, okay? So uh, again, if you don't get all the thyroid tissue out, you still have thyroid antibodies, even though they may come down, they're still attacking, they're still attacking, they're still attacking. And the other uniqueness of Hashimoto's is you, Hashimoto's has a, the reason you get such a wide variety of symptoms from Hashimoto's is because Hashimoto's has a communication with, with so many other tissues in your body. So if you get an immune attack on your thyroid, you might get an immune attack on your intestines every time you eat a food sensitivity. If you have an attack on your thyroid, every time you eat a food sensitivity, which flares up, which flares up autoimmunity, you might get an attack on your cerebellum. These are called molecular mimicry. It's a long story, I don't wanna keep this too long. Uh, but the bottom line is that you can get your thyroid attacked, your intestines attacked, and your, and your cerebellum attacked at the same time. Thyroid's gone, but these aren't. So now they're getting attacked still, and you're getting the same symptoms. And you're like, well, let's just say you got all your thyroid out. You're still getting attacks here. You get attack on your, you can get attack on your ovaries. You're gonna get attack uh, on, your, on your stomach. So you get autoimmune gastritis symptoms. You get, uh, you, could, you, could, you could get an attack on your pancreas and you could be getting blood sugar. So, so the thyroid comes out, but all the other ones are still there. And, and so you're still getting a substantial number of these, of these symptoms, many of which are in the symptoms that I just got done talking about. And, it, and it, it's even really more complex than that if you really start digging down into the, into the nanochemistry of this stuff. But, but really that more or less covers the, the, the general answer of I got my thyroid out and they're, they said I'm going in the hypothyroid, I'm taking the levothyroxine, I'm taking the armor, I'm taking whatever I'm taking, it's not working. Like I just still have, um, I just still have all the symptoms. Those are the reasons why uh, you still have those symptoms. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.